Live from the John Hammond Street Digital Address, DA006714. At this hour, can die in a crowd. This is News at 10 on TV3. We're also live on your DSTV channel 279 and streaming on Facebook Live and on 3news.com. I'm Stephen Enti. Welcome to News at 10. Let's first start with the major news highlights of the day. Car Power Ship Ghana says it is relocating its 470 megawatts power ship at the Tema Fishing Harbour. The decommissioning is to enable the power ship to be relocated to Sekendi in the western region. Car Power Ship Ghana says a relocation exercise will take 17 days beginning Tuesday, August 13. In this regard, the power ship will be off the national grid. Tonight, the Ghana Journalists Association is advocating a legislation to compel radio and television stations to acquire delayed broadcast equipment to avert the relay of intemperate language. On a president of the association, Roland Afel Moni, uh, gave the hint at the launch of a campaign against hate speech in Accra. On danger looms at Afarewa in the Ashaman municipality as a private developer has blocked two streams which collect water from several communities into the Chemu Lagoon. Director of the National Disaster Management Organization at Ashaman, Daniel Aqua, confirmed the situation, if not handled uh, now, can lead to a major disaster. And the Association of Ghana Industries has welcomed government's decision to suspend the power distribution services PDS agreement. Speaking at a media briefing in Accra, President of the Association, Dr. Yao Edu Jemfi, noted government's action was timely and vital to secure national assets. Welcome back. Uh, those were our major news highlights. And remember, we're streaming live on Facebook and on 3news.com. Let's start with our very first story tonight. A 50-acre cocoa farm owned by 2013 National Best Farmer Abraham Eduse is alleged to have been giving out to a small-scale mining company uh, called Arhinasi uh, Limited at Chibi Apepem in the eastern region. On News 360, the president of the Concerned Farmers Association of Ghana, Nana Abuedi Boating Bonsu, spoke with my colleague Aisha Yakubo. Can you tell us about the destruction of the 50 acre cocoa farm? The 50 acre cocoa farm is a global award uh, winning farm, which uh, the, the man called Ibrahim Adisha had it in 2014 and this farm will be destroyed very soon for this uh, small-scale mining which uh, the, pre the presidency of Ghana, Republic of Ghana has given a concession for this organization for them to come and then destroy this cocoa plant and then uh, mine this uh, galaxy or maybe the small-scale mining but what we are saying is uh, it doesn't make sense to us and then one also is uh, why is it that we are destroying cocoa in this country mining at the same time uh, planting rubber and a whole lot of things. The government, the president of Ghana, assure we that he wants one million tons of cocoa. So if we are destroying all the cocoa trees in this country, how can the government get a one million tons? That is what we are calling for. The government shouldn't touch this cocoa tree, uh, the, the cocoa plantation that is there, because it is an award, global award winning in the whole world, which it can be also set as a tourist sector. 
And this cocoa uh, uh, farm, uh, when you get into it and you see the number of fruits that it has bear, which they are going to destroy, it will cause harm to the country and at the same time will turn the image of Ghana internationally. That is why we, the consent farmers, are telling government not to touch this cocoa plantation. Can you confirm who is giving out the cocoa farm to the small-scale uh, mining company? It's the President of the Republic of Ghana. They have given a concession to this uh, small-scale mining to take place at uh, Enum uh, Chibi Apapam. And what agreement has gone on between the owner of the farm and government leading to the leasing of the land? Do you know? The, 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 there's not an agreement that has, uh, has taken place. All that we heard was that the concession has been given and they are going to destroy the cocoa farm and then the mining will take place. And the most annoying thing and the most uh, thing that it hurt me so much is the same place, the Chebi Road that has been constructed recently, which government put a ban on the cocoa road, which that, that side wasn't even put a ban and then he constructed the road, was the cocoa road. You see, and all the cocos that are, uh, that are in that portion so are going to be destroyed. And let us ask them, what have you got from this small-scale mining? What are their contributions towards uh, our economy or towards the road network that is being built in this country? It is the cocoa money. So why is it that government will not hold on with this kind of uh, uh, activity that is going on and then for we to have our cocoa? Because all that we know is cocoa is Ghana and Ghana is cocoa. The backbone of our economy is cocoa, but not this small-scale mining. An independent uh, power producer, Car Power Ship Ghana, says its 470 megawatt power ship will uh, be off the national grid tomorrow, August 13, as it relocates to the western region. This, according to the Energy Ministry, will not affect power supply. Car Power Ship and the Electricity Company of Ghana in June 2014 signed a power purchase agreement for the provision of 450 megawatts of electricity power through the supply of two 225 megawatts power ships by building the infrastructure for the country's medium to long-term electricity supply needs. The first 225 megawatts power ship was supplied. However, through a renegotiation by government, a 470 megawatts power badge was brought in to replace the 225 megawatts plant. Corporate communications specialist at Car Power, Sandra Amakwe, outlined the roadmap for the relocation of the power badge. The arrangement is that the power ship will depart from the Tema Fishing Harbor on Thursday, August 15, and it will birth within the second day naval base on Friday, August 16th. We envisage that due to pre-commissioning works to connect the power ship to the transmission lines in second day, the power ship should be off the national grid for a maximum period of 17 days. The power ship is expected to be connected to the 330 kV transmission lines in second D. The relocation is in line with government strategic policy for the power ship to utilize natural gas from the Western Enclave. Meanwhile, a deputy energy minister, William Oreku Edu, has assured this will not affect power supply. We've taken measures um, to take um, care of that amount of um, energy being taken out of the system, we've taken measures to replace it. There shouldn't be any problem. And I can assure the good people of this country that this movement of car power from Tema to Takwade is not going to cause any um, uh, negative impact on the supply of energy. And danger is looming at Aferiwa and the Shaman municipality as a private developer has blocked two streams which collect water from several communities into the Chemu Lagoon. Director of the National Disaster Management Organization at Ashaman Daniel Aqua confirmed the situation, if not handled now, can lead to a major disaster. Joseph Armstrong has more. For residents of the Ashaman municipality, severe flooding after rains resulting in death and displacement is common. The situation is likely to get worse following the activities of a private developer who is trying to reclaim land by filling two streams. Residents who would not speak on camera for fear of being victimized says houses along the streams are submerged anytime it rains and fear the worst. So we know the kind of person. That's why it's like everybody is trying to because 
there are strong guys behind him. You know that I'm 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 I'm, I'm afraid to speak. I can't speak. Why are you afraid? Can't. Yes, but talk. but the kind of people who are behind him. Regardless of the pressure that comes with the running water from adjoining communities such as Michelle Camp, Sebrepo, Bethlehem, Gulf City, and Christian Village, this is an alternative provided by the private developer. I don't know who whether it is a, an individual or a group of people who are trying to reclaim the land by failing uh, a storm drain. And the moment you fill a storm drain, it may have uh, adverse effect on other people. It may find its way and actually affect innocent people. He expects engineers of the assembly to act quickly. Looking at the storm drain and where the water normally flows from, I don't think. There's no way that particular channel can absorb the water. And that is where it will also find its way and affect other innocent people. Something has to be done about it. So I'll get authorities or other departments informed. The Shema Municipal Assembly is yet to respond to the issue. Joseph Armstrong, TV3 News. You're still watching News at 10 live from the News Hub at Adesawe Kanda and Cry. If you're watching us, uh, we're streaming live on our Facebook page and on 3news.com. We'll be right back with more news. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now, Member of Parliament for Ningo Pram Pram, Sam George Nate, is upbeat to win the NDC's parliamentary primaries there. He's being challenged by his constituency chairman, Michael Quete. Tete. A typical fishing community, Ningo Pram Pram, has become popular due to its beachfront landscapes. Within the old Ningo township, the NDC primaries fever is gradually catching up. Being an NDC stronghold, one can feel the heightened fever. The people know what it is about. They know the quality that I bring to the table. They know the kind of representation I have given in Parliament. And they know what it is that I bring to the table in, in, in generality. And they know what he brings to the table. I mean, they, they would pick substance over form. You understand me? Because I bring substance to the table. I, I, they, they will not chase after shadows. Possibly will be bigger than the victory margin with Honorable Iti Mensah. I beat Honorable Iti Mensah with 64%. I had 64% against Honorable Iti Mensah. It could be in that, same, in that same neighborhood or even more. But I'm extremely confident of a landslide victory. It's not going to be a close victory. An incumbent MP believes his track record speaks volumes and is unmatched. Sam George says his MP's livelihood program is beginning to yield results and will cushion constituents. We are looking to, through the MP's livelihood support program alone, by, by the end of this term, we are looking to have done for exceeding 100 people. So far, we've done 15, 17, that's 32, and then now 37. So we're almost, we're about around 70 thereabout. We're hoping that next year we should even do about 50 people more and then cross the, the 100 mark. And the children's park and library in Sunyai municipality has been abandoned. The park itself is deserted as there's nothing in place to attract patronage. Our correspondent, Larry Parkway Moses, had come out uh, with the following report. Children's park, the world over, are designated areas where facilities are put in place to engender the healthy growth and well-being of children. This is however not the case at the Sunyai Municipal Children's Park. A recent media report prompted the clearing of the overgrown weeds. Overly exposed at the park are neglected falling trees, broken fence wires and unfriendly playing ground. Squatters also find the park a safe haven to wash and dry their clothes. A substantial portion of the park is enveloped in thick bushes and trees. Within the frightening thick growth is a children's park library. The once imposing facility has been neglected and left to rot. Everything in the library is totally shattered beyond repairs. It's unfortunate that we have this children's park in the state in which it is now. It doesn't speak well of the nation in terms of the, the law that we've made and then the commitment that internationally we've also made and what we owe children. So I think that we need to take steps to develop this place and the state must also be interested. And as society, we need to also ensure that we take uh, government on.
to develop this place for uh, their children. I don't think that what we are seeing today is nothing to write home about. The neglect of the children's park and library does not only constitute a drain on public funds, but a deprivation of children's right to enjoy their leisure and recreation in the Sunyani municipality. I will appeal to the Minister of Local Government to consider this as a priority. It's important that um, we look at it as a national agenda uh, uh, to see how best we can develop sites that would also promote the welfare of children. It's, it's, it's very key. These are little things that we take for granted, but it speaks a lot of volume. It also communicates to children that the state is being responsible towards their welfare. And the Registrar of the Scholarship Secretariat, Kinsley Ajimai, has denied claims by former President John Mahama that more female Ghanaian students were sent to Cuba in 2012 to be trained as doctors. Discounting the claims in an interview with TV3, he also described the deal as a bad one which overburdened the national purse. In 2012, the former president, John Dramani Mahama, negotiated a deal with the Cuban authorities to send young Ghanaians to be trained as doctors. The arrangement cost $150,000 per trainee for seven years, which was not under a scholarship by the Cuban government. 250 Ghanaians made up of 85 females and 165 males were sent to Cuba, out of which 220 have completed the course. Nine failed the Cuban state exams, while seven who engaged in infractions of the Cuban law were repatriated. Thirteen students were repeated, one bolted, with another also sent home on medical grounds. All the 220 doctors who are here are all general practitioners. None of them is a specialist. So the assertion that uh, he took gynecologists there or people are coming to train in the ops and gyne is obviously a falsehood. Again, also asserted that uh, more women were taken. That is also a palpable lie. The registrar of the scholarship secretariat, Kaisley Ajeman, spoke about the 2019 agreement of the new batch of the students. When ex-president Mahama negotiated for the deal, it cost every student for the entire duration of the program tuition and accommodation was $96,090. In 2019, when we went to renegotiate, we had it at $55,000 US dollars per student for the duration of the program. Obviously, seven years down the line, average, average minds or reasonable people will believe that it should have gone up instead of it coming down. So I believe that the negotiation was a bad negotiation in 2012. The 220 trainee doctors will write their exams before being posted. The Deputy Minister of Health, Alex K.K. Aban, urged the students to follow standards and comply with directives. Some of the doctors shared their experience. What stands out in the Cuban training? I mean, you get to go to the field from first year of medical school, we're already seeing patients not taking, I mean, um, bold uh, steps in it, no, but at least having interaction with patients and it's very practical. We wish the doctors the very best uh, in Ghana as they integrate into our health sector. Let's move on to other stories. The Ghana Journalists Association, GJA, is advocating a legislation to compel radio and television stations to acquire delayed broadcast equipment to avert the relay of intemperate language. On air, President of the Association, Roland Afeo Moni, gave the hint at the launch of a campaign against hate speech in Accra. Insults, they say, begets insults. So the trading of insults on our airwaves must stop. We strongly recommend the acquisition by or supply of delayed broadcast equipment to all radio and TV stations in Ghana. The GJ is ready to back any legislative efforts in this respect. Peace, it is said, is the ultimate of life. And so under no circumstances should the peace of this country be sacrificed on the altar of political campaign or devilish agenda.
Speaking at the launch of the Watch Your Tank campaign, the president of the Ghana Journalists Association, Roland Afilmoni, recounted some reckless statements made during 2008 and 2012 electioneering. Certain rogue elements mounted certain pugnacious radio stations to openly incite violence or ignite war. It took the grace of God to save this nation from self distraction. Those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. The GJA president recalled the Rwandan genocide and insisted there must be conscious efforts to protect Ghana. The bad examples of evil use of the tongue in Rwanda should serve as a fountain of lessons from which all Ghanaians, particularly politicians and journalists, must drink. A cardinal lesson is that Ghana is not immune from instability caused by unguarded use of the tank. Thus, points must be drummed home more and more as we head towards election 2020. He appealed to the police administration and government to honor Sergeant Daniel Kwesiofori appear for his initiative. Police officers are essentially peace officers. Without any shred of doubt, Kwesiofori Apia has taken the peace drive to a higher notch. And my humble recommendation is for Kwesiofori Apia to be promoted for being a veritable ambassador of peace. The Guard Your Town campaign seeks to promote the core values of think right, speak right, write right, and act right. Of course, journalists, especially electronic media practitioners, must own this campaign and saturate the airwaves with it. Their best push for this campaign will be to cleanse our newspapers, radio, and TV stations of linguistically toxic material with some channels every day without any sense of shame or prick of conscience. And head of risk at the Bank of Ghana, Evelyn Quitia, has urged corporate Ghana to place emphasis on risk management to inform decision making based on data. At the opening of the Africa Convention in quantitative methods and risk management in Accra, she noted one of the major issues that led to the collapse of some financial institutions in the country was lack of risk management. Risk management in business is the forecasting and evaluation of financial risk together with the identification of procedures to avoid or minimize their impact. This concept is transferable and cuts across all sectors of the economy. At the opening of the Africa Risk Convention in Quantitative Methods and Risk Management in Accra, Head of Risk at the Bank of Ghana, Evelyn Kotia, noted risk management is the way forward in saving corporate Ghana. Some of the issues that affected the financial sector that we saw some banks being um, collapsed or being taken over was as a result of weak um, risk management in the respective banks. So every part of uh, the Ghana economy has to take risk management very, very serious because the moment you are able to identify your risks, you are able to mitigate your risks, you will uh, derive better benefit. The risk management convention and training is to offer politicians, policy makers, industry players among others to appreciate risk associated with their work. This could be used for you know organizations around the world uh, doing things like value at risk, probability of default and so forth, all the way to multinational organizations. And 20 to 25 percent of the course has to do with theory, but at the same time 75 percent of the time is hands-on application. Managing Director of OSL Risk Management, Dr. Elvis Hernandez Pedumo, urged the trainees to be the game changers after their course. After this event, it's important that these guys come back to the organizations and start applying these type of things into the day-to-day -day activities and at the same time helping decision maker to make informed decisions. The Pro Vice Chancellor of UPSA, Professor Charles Bano and Dr. Rexford Atabuache of the Coventry University UK put the Africa Risk Convention into the Ghanaian perspective. 
in the various sectors in the economy to improve on their decision making. Um, currently, you agree with me that um, some decisions have been made in this country. Uh, perhaps we may not have considered the right quantitative data for making those decisions. It quantifies. Uh, it gives you a different perspective of how to manage risk. There were a lot of guys competitively wanted to take it to other countries. I was able to put economic and business case for this project to come to Ghana. Then it came to which institutions that we, we can partner with in Ghana. So we managed to talk to uh, investor professional studies. And that's how we wrap up on news at 10. Thank you very much for making time on behalf of the crew. Good night. There is more news at 3news.com.